There we go. So um, thank you for ever, to everyone for joining us and who all of those people who are continuing to join us today. Um, my name is Joanna Frang. I am the executive director at the Barrett Art Center in Poughkeepsie, New York. And I am just so enthusiastic about today's, the topic of today, um, which is about a new way of approaching something that humans have been doing artistically and portraying for a very long time. And at Barrett, we've been hosting this amazing show curated by Penny Dell. Um, it's an invitational that celebrates the figure called The Body Beautiful. This is the third year. It's called The Body Beautiful Three, appropriately. And today, Penny has brought us together with Roz Diamond. You can see behind Penny Dell there um, her work on the walls, Roz's work, um, which is it is depicting the figure, but maybe in um, a, some new ways that we are not uh, used to having happen in our gallery and up in our studio space where we, during this, the next couple weeks during the show, we will have live figure drawing. Um, so this just adds one more way that we can participate in celebrating the figure um, through different media. And I am so thrilled to have with us Roz Diamond today. Um, we're so grateful that she decided to move new, move north from the south. Um, she's been up here in the New York area painting with a digital brush for over 30 years. Um, and we can kind of begin to see the, how oil paintings moved to pixels. And she's the creator of a new form of art and storytelling, which she recently spoke about at a conference on immersive new media at Yale, Yale's CCAM, um, the CCAM. Um, a recent commission at the Children's Museum of Long Island is so cool she, on her website. She has some pictures of um, her putting up this installation where she worked with young people um, of color from Latinx background um, to really create this um, interactive piece that celebrates young people and um, this digital media. And that was all supported by the NEA, the New York State Foundation of the Arts, and the IMLS, um, which is the Institute for Museum and Library Studies. Um, another museum commission recently entailed taking 300 years of history and making it into a single work of art whose story is accessible by all with an iPhone or iPad, which is totally cool. And just so you know, um, Roz has a piece in the permanent collection of the 9-11 Memorial Museum. She's a member of the Carter Burden Gallery in Chelsea. And her work was recently featured in one of the first curated shows of NFTs called NFT Now, which I'm so glad someone understands it um, because I am still lagging behind on the NFT trend. So I am so pleased to let Roz take over the event. Welcome everybody. I see some friends here and I did want to mention that they're um, friends from everywhere, but I do want to mention a few people, particularly like Leah Oppenheimer, who's here, who's with the Children's Museum, uh, who I worked with on that project and, and several artists um, uh, from the Texpressionism.com group that I've gotten very involved with. Um, and we'll be having, uh, we're showing with some of them, but I've already shown with a few of them online. And, uh, and also just friends and a few collectors like George Hell and Michael Pierre Price, to Expressionism, Nina, just saying hello to everybody and thank you for coming. So I'm going to, uh, I think I'll start, what we're doing today, obviously, are, it's not the diamond scapes, which is the larger kind of novels, I would call them, where 300 layers become one image which seems to be what our world really is becoming. I think that's speaking to the young age. I mean, just look at how many images a young person looks at before they even learn to make a sentence. You know, uh, It's almost like they're born with the uh, iPad in, in the womb. So um, it's interesting to see this all this evolve, but I'm going to be speaking to my roots, which really, uh, I'm still all about drawing and painting and uh, drawing is difficult and arduous and it's, and wonderful, but it's just as difficult on a computer if you can't really draw on a pad, which I've done lots of that, uh, you also cannot uh, draw on a computer. Uh, but I wanna just take you in. I thought it'd be fun to, um, um, Penny, I wanna thank Penny too for having me. I wouldn't be in the show if it weren't for Penny Dell. And um, so glad that, that I could participate. Um, and I also want to thank Joanna for having me here this afternoon. So I, want, I thought it might be, 
I think Joanna or Penny suggested, how about, could you just record something, um, you drawing on your computer? And there's a way you can do that. So earlier this week, um, I'm just gonna switch my screen and my sharing. Yeah, okay, let me see. You guys should see my screen. Uh, not real exciting yet, but I'm gonna open up this video I rec recorded. Do you see a, a nude model? Um, nobody sees it? Well, maybe we don't have your shared screen yet. Oh, okay, maybe I didn't share it. Okay, oh yeah, I didn't. I always do this. Ah. You know, I'm telling you, when people say, Ross, how did you ever get into technology? You know, my husband is, can affirm that it, it's all been through my art. When my paintings filled up with pixels and the whole world went digital, I, I responded, but reluctantly, believe me, giving up those oil paints. So earlier this week, in response to what Penny had suggested, I, um, I went to a site where you can actually look at a model for free. And I recorded myself drawing that model and this is about 17 minutes. So uh, Joanna, uh, feel free to interrupt me if you think uh, we need a little, uh, you, I can stop. But at the same time, I think it's kind of an inter interesting experience. So without further ado, I'm just going to start the, the video that I made. Okay, so I think we're recording here. And um, can you hear? I'm just gonna take you through the whole long arduous. I think we're recording here. And um, I'm just gonna take you through the whole long arduous. Um, Sorry. Okay, so I think work. we're recording here and um, I'm just gonna take you through the whole long, arduous, wonderful process of drawing while on the computer. I mean, it's the same kind of nervous and wonderful apprehension you get when confronting the, the figure without clothes, when you're, you're in a studio with one another and drawing from the model. I, I come from that background and uh, it's the same heightened sort of feeling that, uh, of some sort of sacred thing happening. Uh, I just want you to see the model I've chosen to draw from on my screen. Now I'm gonna just move this over to another screen. And yes, you're gonna see some deer in the background now of this screen. Um, and I'm gonna take you through the process just as if you were setting up your canvas. Um, I'm going to use Photoshop to, I've moved the model over to another screen so I can look at it. I'm gonna open Photoshop. This would be like you're, you're getting your charcoal out, you got your canvas, you're, you're getting your paper ready, you know, um, and I'm gonna go up here to file. I hope you can see, I'm gonna to go to new, doing a new drawing. And these are all like different uh, size drawings, but I'm gonna make it my own and I'm gonna call it nude one by Roz. And I want this to be, I decide how big my canvas is. Um, let's say it'll be like uh, 10 inches wide. Um, I guess I'll go horizontal and it'll be, um, well, I want to do this, 10 by let's say um, eight. And I want it to be 300 pixels per inch so I can go much bigger when I show this. And I do want my background, this is my background, white, but I could make another background, but I think I'll make it white and I'm gonna create. So here's my canvas and here are my tools. Just like you, you're arranging all your things all over the screen. I don't need paragraph, I'm not writing. I do need layers, layers are important. The background is white. I'm gonna go ahead and save as to name my file. New one by Roz, body beautiful. It's a PSD file in Photoshop, meaning I can save many layers. And you know, the thing I use most, here's my tools over here, right here. And I'm gonna use this drawing tool. I think I'm gonna do this all in black and white. So I think I'd like to um, put this in grayscale mode. So I'm going to discard the color information. You know, it's that boring stuff you got to do. Like you got to know how all your tools work before you get going. And there are going to be accidents anyway, even if you do that. But I think I'm ready to go. Now I'm over here in my background. See where I am over here? And I'm going to make layer number one. I do do keystrokes. I mean, I've been on doing digital art so long and you can't see me right now, uh, but I'll show you when I, share this with you at the Barnett Center, Body Beautiful. Hello, everyone. 
I didn't even say that. <laughs> I'm a little nervous today too. I've never actually done this quite this way. So um, I have my little stylus in my hand and I'm actually gonna be touching the screen while I look at the image. Um, and I want to make my, I'm gonna go and select my color. I want black. I say, okay. And then uh, this is my layer one, see right over, right over here. And I'm going to just use the um, a hard round pressure size brush. There are tons of brushes over here that I can choose. You can see, I mean, look at all these brushes I can use. It's like unbelievably complicated. Uh, I want the opacity to be 100 and the flow and everything. So let's see what size do I want. I think I want it smaller than this. Um, and I'm just going to go to my canvas and I'm going to just like try drawing a little bit here. Oh, I still think my pen is too big. I'm going to start with a small pen. You can always undo things. And I want to just get that swoop of this guy with his hair, of course. Maybe that's just the first layer. Let's do another one. And I'm going to make my brush smaller. And I'm going to do the second layer of that like, beautiful shoulder he has and down his back. And oh, here we go. It's not perfect, you know, not at all. That's just one layer. I'm going to go to another layer. And um, I think I want to get um, a brush that is kind of smudgy, you know what I mean? Like, Maybe one of these. Then I'm going to bring it up in size and I'm going to make the opacity like 62. And I'm just going to see, I see some shadows in this and I'm just going to make one right there. So I'm going to do undo. I didn't really like that. Okay, so that's my next layer. Then I'm, I'm making another layer. I, I'm up to four layers. But you're kind of getting the process of what I'm going through here. Um, and I'm going to go back to a very sharp brush again and make it much smaller. And I'm going to go back and make my opacity 100% again. But I'm going to make the brush itself maybe just kind of a gray. Um, and I'm going to like I'm just draw some of this hair. I didn't really have that hair feeling though. So I'm going to leave that because I don't mind that layer. And I can always undo it later. That's the cool thing. Um, I can always name these layers over here. Like, look, layer five. It's a good idea. You go in there and go gray, gray line near his hair. Because all these layers can go up and down and between each other. Um, and whatever's on top of one another will, will be important in the drawing. So I'm going to go get another brush. I'd like to get something that looks kind of like hair. Uh, let's see here. Selected brushes. Maybe uh, I'm not sure this is going to do it, but I'm just going to try it. That's a little hair, I'm like. But there is a feather brush that I'm looking for, and I can't quite find at this time. Um, that has a little bit of a hair stuff thing going on. And I'm going to just oh yeah. Can't we put that in? I'm going to make it bigger. And go, cool, yeah, just a little bit of his hair. And now I'm going to go back to a, a line, a line drawing right here and make it smaller, much smaller. And I don't know why, I just feel like I'm going to go to a new layer. And I'm going to make just three little heat, boom, boom. You know, I just need those little lines. I mean, this is no perfect thing. I'm just trying to share with you what you go with. I'm going to go back to a black because I can always make it gray with less transparency. I tend to use sometimes just the simplest brushes because I just want my hand to show, you know. Um, oh. What does that do? No, I don't think so. Oh, but that would be interesting. See this brush right here? I think I'm going to make it very small. And I see something on his back that kind of makes me maybe a little bit bigger. Makes me you know, a little bigger. And I'm going to give it less than 100%. 
I go, oh, it's something going on in this back. And see, I can't get these kind of uh, lines uh, normally without working digitally. And I love that. There's some kind of instantaneous thing that happens with digital that's just so fascinating to me. And um, I'm already getting off my canvas. So, you know, maybe I'm going to make my canvas a little bit bigger. It's got a canvas size. It's 10. Let's make it, it's 10 inches wide. I mean, I'm running off canvas. So unlike you guys, where you have to deal with the paper you have, I can just really expand the canvas right now. So I'm going to. Always feels like you're cheating a little bit. And I'll, I'll expand the, well, I want to expand the top. I'm going to make it 12 by 8. Now see, now I have more room. How about that? Now I can select all these layers. I'm selecting them all. And I can just move the whole thing over a little bit to make sure his little sweet little foot. Oh, but I want his hand in there too. I think I'm gonna leave it right where it is. But you see what I'm doing a little bit. Now I'm back at layer five. Should I keep going here? Oh, I think I wanna be on layer six. Don't wanna so put people to sleep. Layer. I'm using keyboard <laughs> commands to make layers. Now, of course we wanna save once in a while. And this is something you can't do on your canvas either. I feel like sort of like nanny nanny boo boo a little here. Like, oh, see what I can do? But it is pretty fascinating. Um, I'm gonna go back to my just plain brush tool, you know, nothing fancy here. Just the one I like, that that hard round pressure size, you know, the one I started with. A really small little brush and normal, and I want my opacity back up at 100 because I just wanna do some little drawing here. I love this little cup where his shoulder comes in and then that could just be one layer, you know, because all this can animate later. And then I love this little tender part of his body. So sweet. And then I want to get the gesture of his buttocks. And then the other buttock. And then the foot. Oh my God, it's so gorgeous, isn't it? It's so gorgeous. I'm going to take the opacity down. Let's make another layer. It's a wonderful model, a little pose. I mean, I don't have to do this for long. And just make his foot sit on that ground. Now, when I press this, this paper feels my pressure. It feels me. It knows what I'm asking it to do. Um, I've got to go back to opacity 100. I'm going to go to another layer. Now, look how many layers I have. On. See over here? See how many layers I have? I've got nine layers. I can go rename them later. But I want to get a bit of this leg going over here. I've got to move my menu. See, I, I have so much versatility here. And it might not make sense, but I really don't care. Um, but I just want to draw this, this wonderful, wonderful thing going on. But have I thought I'd stop it. Um, how are you guys doing? I, you know, it's, I thought I might just go kind of quickly through it so you can see it go to the end. Um, and I'm just taking you through it of things that I put in. I actually had a, a little square block at one point. Joanna, what do you think? Are you guys, I kind of have to hear if people want to keep hearing it or stop it or what? I, I, I really love hearing your process and it really has, you've been very patient about, you know, all the tiny little steps that are needed. And, um, I myself am going to have to go and buy Photoshop, you know, and get <laughs> your, your, you might actually inspire me to take that step, which I've been resisting for so long. And, um, you know, I do like the, the layers. It's a different way to think, you know, that you can't, you can't ruin your drawing because you've got it isolated. So if you don't like something, you can go back. I, I like that part a lot. Yeah, so, that's a nice thing, but you can always ruin it still. Some people really can't deal with digital because you have so many choices. And if you don't know where you're going, it's just going to be a big mess. Um, something I wanted to point out towards the end of the filming of this is I went to sign it. And you can see my name. I'll just it's one of the on the side and make it an addition, which is an easy thing to do with digital. I want them to know I, this was signed. This was signed Roz AP. And I never, I'm always kind of careful about where I sign. Man, I want this to be a really small brush. So we'll just keep seeing how this works. And I'm going to sign it right here, Roz. 
um, um, AP number one. But see, I don't know if I like that because it's kind of getting. I'll stop it again and just over uh, speak over it. But the idea of being here, which leads into NFTs a little bit, and I think it's an interesting concept to share with everyone, is that as I did this drawing, and I kind of like this drawing because it's very abstract, and I just didn't belabor it much more. And I like the square in his head and just the the feeling about it. I've called it Centaur One with horns, um, and. Um, uh, I, I, at the end, thinking, what if I want to put this up as an NFT? It's it's a newly made thing inside this beast of the computer, the machine. And if I made it into an NFT, which is a whole nother marketplace for art online, uh, the, it, the unique thing is it gives provenance to work that is made in this way. Because when this gets minted online, if I put this up and join some of my techpressionism.com friends up there, and we have a group where we have some NFTs going, um, this is minted as the AP number one of this particular drawing. And because it records the actual machine interface of the way it's made, I can't, I, it can't be, another AP number one cannot be made. So it gives provenance to my work in the collecting art world. Um, that said, one reason I got so particular about signing the piece is, and I did, I don't know if you can see, but it's very light. Uh, every mark counts in a drawing, so I'm always really kind of, uh, I'm very, I, it's very hard for me to sign my work, so I like to hide it inside the drawing. It says Ra's AP number one, but that is now embedded when this file is saved, and all these layers are saved as well, and it can become an animated piece. Um, but while we go to questions, it's just a thought, but I also have um, the actual drawing itself and can show you a few more things about it as you ask questions, if if that would be something people might like to do for a few minutes. Um, I can't hear people, so somebody has to. Yeah, do it. That sounds good. Okay, great. Yes. All right, so um, let me um, close QuickTime and let me get back to, this is the actual piece that was created that day and it'll come up with all the layers. But now we'll be going live. And um, it, there's this uh, in my, where if you can see me, there, this stylus right here, the stylus can feel my touch. I wouldn't like working in this meeting if it couldn't feel my touch because I'm all about emotions and I, I'm an old fashioned painter really. Um, it's all about color and form and drawing. And I don't know, I think great art should work on about um, at least five serious layers, be way beyond just conceptual. I mean, I think we need to raise the bar a bit even though I find all of it interesting and I found some conceptual art very interesting if it's a really fabulous concept, but I think, you know, concept, uh, skill of craftsmanship, um, innovative, uh, is it, does it have something universal that connects with other people? Um, you know, it, there's just so much we could be doing. And I think this medium is part of that. Um, of course, any medium is. I still love drawing on canvas too, but I just thought I'd show you a few things now that I'm live. Um, and one of them is that, you know, if I want to go in and draw really closely, uh, look, it looks like this looks like a landscape and I'm just really right in his backbone on those little marks I made. And what percentage am I in at this painting? I think I'm looking at him. Um, I don't know. I have so many menus going up in the shares. It's a hundred, it's, it's 300%, but here's a hundred percent. So when I print this out at eight by 10, I'm not gonna lose one thing. And some of my bigger paintings that I make at, you know, they're 48 inches wide and 30 inches high. Um, I don't really see it until it goes out to the medium itself, which really reverses everything in the art world. You know, you make a painting, then you make a print. I make a painting here, and then it goes out to something that's real and physical. But when a client wants something, I go, how high and how big, you know? And it's, it's a whole different way and the commerce of it is, is fascinating too. And I, I think the art world may be catching up to this. Um, but I did want to show you the zoom factor because that's really important um, when I'm zooming in and out to look at things. Plus you can add photography at different layers. There's no end. And of course, you know, you can turn layers on and off. So I can go, oh, I like that better. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, I got to have that arm. I got to have this. I got to have that. 
Um, I can also animate this. And I do have an animated link in from a series of, I could show you in a minute. But right now, does anybody want to ask any questions while we're stopping for a minute? Sure. May, yeah. Hi. Um, hey, um, thanks. This I loved your video. I love this drawing. Um, Thank you. What happens if you don't do the layers? Is, is Are you doing the layers because it allows you to remove them and add them? Or what were, what were to happen if you didn't do the layers with the different brush strokes and stuff that you're doing? That is a wonderful question. I think it could be uh, just as exciting as when I do a drawing on a piece of paper. Uh, and in some ways, if you're new to doing digital drawing, you don't wanna do, I mean, I can hit command shift in so fast, it's almost like breathing for me because I've been drawing in this space so long. So I am quickly doing a keystroke in between, but it does break up. I think that's after drawing a long time in this medium. It's the kind of shortcuts you do when you've been painting a long time, things that you go, oh, if I do it this way, I know later this will happen. Uh, but I think if you did it all in one layer, it'd be very exciting and very, very intuitive. Um, but then if you make a mistake or you decide, oh, I don't like that, that one orange or the, the little black thing, or you can't take it out or you can, but you're going to be messing with other layers as well. And here, you know, I can move layers up and down and I can also, I can take five layers and say, oh, make that one folder. That's just his elbow. And then I expand it. I mean, the bigger paintings that I do call my diamond scapes, they're, they're literally, some are even thousands of layers. I mean, it gets into thousand almost really, because just one little piece, I might try a, about 15 different things and go, oh, no, I don't like this. I mean, it's, it, you can go down the bunny hole and drive yourself insane, just like with any other artwork where you're wrestling with it and you're, oh, what is it? What's the one thing that's missing and which layer is it? And, you know, that, that whole stuff that goes on. And with digital, it's almost even more agony because you go, what if I just added that one little gold speck? Oh, what if I take it off? Put it on, take it off. You know, it's that whole stuff. Um, it's kind of freeing to have the risk of going back to paper where you just don't think about any of this stuff and, and just do it. So I'm, I'm sort of, in, I mean, at a place, I, if everything keeps changing, uh, let me turn off my phone. Oh, the world of technology, don't we love it? I do, but it's, it's insane. I mean, when a lot of us started in this, you know, there was no internet. We just, pixels were invading our, our work in a way that we could had to respond to a medium. We really didn't know what was coming. Um, and we talk about this a lot at techspressionism.com. There are a lot of young artists and old artists. And, and I love hearing from, from young artists as well and what their challenges are. And I, I relate and, and try to inspire and tell them to persevere, you know, <laughs> listen to interruptions. I did, and it changed my whole art career. I, I was doing big canvases and oils and, and I still do, but, and I'll probably go back to it. At some point I will not be able to keep up with the technology, but I don't know, so far I am. Um, Aaron, did that, did you get the answer? You were, does that help? Yeah. What you were, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Um, I can show other things if people don't have questions, but if you do, Rock, just- uh, you. This is David. I was wondering what, if you could add a little bit more clarity about what you mean about layers. Can you, is it every time you pick up a different brush, it's a different layer? Or no, you move no. one layer forward and one back and decide yeah. to put all the greens on top and all the blues on the bottom? Sure. What does layering uh, do for you? I'm sorry? What does layering end up helping you do? Well, it helps me, uh, you know, say, okay, let's, I'm turning a layer off. Let me, let me get a big layer that is real visible to you. Hold on a second. Uh, let me go find a layer that is, um, now see that layer, uh, the big black marks of his hair where I got real expressionistic. The layer is over here. It's called layer number 12. I'm sorry, it's so small on your screen, um, but I would probably go name this later, later, but I might go, oh, it allows me to take a layer out like that and I could go put it like way behind or way in front I don't think it's really showing it as well as I like but I'll say something Picasso once said if I could lift up all the layers and storytelling in my painting and share it with someone wouldn't that be great and in some ways you can kind of see in a painting that there are lots of layers going on in collage and I and this medium we can do that uh so and then I can go in and go oh I don't actually like what I did um with you know, is this left buttock or, you know, I, I want to take that off. Oh, I don't like that. I want to redo it. So once it's unviewable, I can click on this layer where it's visible or not. And you can't, I know it's small on the screen. Um, 
but I'm clicking to make a layer visible or not. And it's just, it's almost like magic, you know? <laughs> Whoa. I mean, I went in and drew with a whole class who were drawing from the model. And I took my Wacom tablet, which is what I work with here. You can't quite see it, but this is a big 24 inch tablet. And my Wacom pen, my stylus that I just showed you. And I don't know what I did with it. It's around here somewhere, oh, right here. And I just plugged in and went in between people who had their big paper and their drawing and stuff. And they're like, what in the hell? What is this? this is like back in 2006 or something you know, at a big drawing class. And, and, and they, we all went after it. And then we had so much fun talking to each other because they realized, I said, I'm you, you know, I, I'm going after this thing the same way you are, but it, with different kind of constraints. And, and I mean, there's no mess, there's no spill, but I have uh, other um, things that are difficult. I got it. So, um, yes. this, oh, but more about layers. The way I make a layer is I can either go up here and say new layer and it makes it for me and it adds a layer to, and I can name it at that time. I tend to draw very gesturally, so I name the layers later. Um, and, and they just come up on top of each other and, and you can, whatever's on the very top is going to be foremost in the foreground. So, it just gives you a lot more malleability in a painting and a drawing, but it brings up a whole lot. It helps me also, I animate these things. I, I, I like to animate my drawings later and I can make them into animations and people can see it being drawn one layer at a time, not just as a video, but as a, as a drawing. So if you stop on layer number, start on layer number one, everything is behind you after that. And if you start on layer 20, everything is put on top of that. Exactly. And thank you for bringing up that behind and on top, because I, for years, been saying about these diamond scape paintings. I go, look, you're going deep into the Z space of a painting, into the X, not the yep. X, the Y, but the Z. But I kind of use old technology to, to, for people to go through these paintings. But the whole idea is that what digital does, which I think is the most fascinating thing that leads us into a whole new dimension in painting, is that in this flat screen that is flatter than flat, you can go forever deep. There's no limit to how many layers you can put in this thing. And, and yet it's flat as a pancake. I mean, people go, Roz, do you, don't you miss the texture? And I, I really don't, I, I'm a, not much. I, I never did a lot of texture in my paintings even. Um, but I love the illusion of it. And I love that I can go out to tile or anything that's translatable to digital, I could go out to and make it a very permanent kind of physical work. Um, so it, it it is it is fascinating it is fascinating on on so many on so many layers and i think we're just beginning i think it's i've, I've been saying this for years and uh but nobody's <laughs> listening but a lot of people are talking about it we're talking about this in expressionism we're all coming to it from a different point of view but the larger scope to me is that i think a new kind of atelier of art is beginning i i work with a team on my larger paintings these are big commissions you know, taking three where I go photograph the artifacts of, a, of something and make it into a painting. I mean, imagine all the photos and things you have in your house. And I've done a few portraits where people take the things off their wall and I have a whole 12 page contract for how does they take them off. I get them FedEx to me. I put a yellow sticker on their wall where everything used to be their wedding, their whatever, and, and uh, make sure everything's insured and get it back to them. So there's a whole huge process of scanning the things and then making, instead of having everything on their wall, they can keep them on their wall, but then they get a painting. And that's where talent comes in because you can have a lot of layers with a lot of things and you can make the biggest mess ever, you know? And if it's not your medium, it won't work. I, 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 I wasn't really very good at the little, you know, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of mediums that I wasn't, I can do different things, but for me, it, it's more spontaneous and color and form and design. You have to be thinking about all these things if you're going to make a good painting out of 300 layers. But I remember a teacher once saying, you know, a great artist can make a light bulb interesting. And I, I think that's true. So even though I'm doing commissions now, I, I, the process is so fascinating to me that I love going, oh, how can I make this into this abstract painting that people come into this historical society and take their phones and enter into the paintings. Cause I, I worked with a programmer to make it so that they can go inside the painting. Um, you can tell I'm very shy. I was really shy at a time, but I'm not anymore. Once you get excited, it just can change your life. Um, and it really has, it's changed my life, but it's been very hard. It was it's hard to be an artist anyway, as we all know, it's hard to be a human being. Um, 
but uh, just, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of doors were shut in our faces for those of us who've been in the forefront of this medium, and I'm not playing the violin, it's been real exciting too. Um, you know, I worked at real big companies for a while that were just getting into it, and I, I enjoyed that too. I, I like mixing it all up, and I see a new atelier forming where young people will be making paintings of layers and layers and layers and loading just about anything into it, but you won't be going across like a video. You will be going deep. I think that is the next big thing. And I've been saying it forever, uh, or, you know, not forever. I'm just one little speck here on the universe, but still, I'm excited about it because you're going deep into a painting in a way that we never could. And it will be a whole new language coming up. Um, and it's, it's developing now. Um, and I think it'll be a thing where it'll be commercially viable, as well as uh, you know, artists will be huge about the next visual hieroglyphics that are on the radar right now. I, I, I love reading and you know, one of my poet friends was here, I don't know if he's still here, George. Um, I love language and I go to a poetry club every week after to expressionism and um, I love the depth of it, but we know that young people aren't writing as well, but boy, their visual acuity, if you go to, I've gone to shows of high school kids and I'm like, wow, they, they are looking at images so much, you know, and they make emoji all the time. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole new world and um, it's exciting to see. I like keeping in touch with what the young people are doing. So uh, I could show a few more things or I can uh, answer questions or uh, does anybody have a- Rod, has, um, Hi, Michael. Hey. It's good to see you and this is wonderful uh, it's it's really fascinating to see some of your uh, process as well do you, so do you tend to make i didn't know if if the amount of layers for this drawing is fairly typical for you or did you do it more as an illustrative sort of uh look at your process because you have a lot of layers for something that that feels very i don't want to say simple but rather kind of straightforward and i was just curious uh if this is fairly typical for you do you in other words do you, it, you were almost making new layers for every new gesture and i just didn't know if if that's kind of you know your go-to yeah. That's that's really uh, yeah great question Michael uh, fellow friend and artist he just had an opening very exciting uh, immersive kind of situation he was doing too um, I um, most of my drawings are usually in the eighty or ninety like my gun drawings um, you know just to, to make things a little more interesting on the screen I think I'll get out of Photoshop for a minute and um, oh no I'm not gonna save it uh, and just show maybe something a little different for a second while I answer your question, but oh, let, me, let me just get all of these together and open these with preview. Um, like a drawing like this, this Kalashnikov drawing, um, it's all done digitally and it's probably about 300 layers. Okay. Uh, and the drawings usually my digital nudes, which I do have a series of nudes that I've done, um, the digital nudes are probably about between 60 and 90. So I I work really fast when I'm drawing and I draw gesturally and with emotion. Um, so when people say, well, how long did it take you to do that? Uh, you know what I say? I say 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know people don't know how to judge how much a painting or a drawing is worth, but some things, you know, I, I mean, I couldn't have done this drawing without years of, uh, experience and thoughts and you know all sorts of things um tackling guns was was came directly out of another series i was doing and some of the people here know i'm i'm also very very spiritually inclined i'm an interfaith minister um and uh i i say that because i'm we're looking at a gun and it's an evil beast um but i'm i i defend these pieces because i'm drawing objects i'm drawing objects that are in our society and it doesn't I'm not with empathy, but I open up the paper every day and there's a there's something about a gun. Um, all of our entertainment, you know, is about guns. Some of the, the things that are most revered movies are have guns. Our 
they're they're everywhere and they're also in museums and, and weapons have always been part of museum collections so um Roz, i have a husband question yes but let me show one thing husband one second i don't want to show one gun how, how one series leads to another this is the gun that shot abraham lincoln it's called i'm afraid of the rainbow lincoln and i look at a gun online and draw it but I just want to say, and here's a Lincoln. So that, that came last year that came out of the whole election thing. I did a series of Lincolns. So um, yes, husband. Husband question. I, I, I know because I'm your husband that you have a lot of diversity in your art. And sometimes people get confused by that. Many artists just do one thing. So in just your digital drawings, which is the topic of this, you know, this presentation, how do you explain the, the, the differentiation between doing a machine gun or a Lincoln or an artifact or a, a, a drawing the, the nude in a room? How do you explain that to people so that they understand where you're going with your art? Uh, that's a great question and a tough one. Um, and I've talked to you about it. Um, I don't want to be put in a box. And some people don't feel they're put in a box at all. And they do the same thing their whole life. And they obsess on it. And they obsess on it. And they obsess on it. For me, I react to my world. I would say, I think that's where a retrospective of an artist is really important. Because you can see the energy and, and what, what makes an artist's work all go together when you see a whole body of work. Um, but, you know, I, I have a coffee cup that says, you know, why does Picasso have eight periods and a, and a woman only gets one? <laughs> now, that's kind of a pun on words a little. But the truth of it is, for me, I'm always responding to my society. Um, and, and so things change. And, and I don't see why. I mean, people do novels and they do poetry. And I see my drawings more as poems and the diamond scapes more like, you know, um, net novels. And yet there's a huge breadth of, um, of difference in, in the things that I've done. So I think I, I look at Gerard Richter. He's, he's an amazing artist. He's versatile. He, he's done so many different styles. And um, I don't even know. That, that was not a planted question, by the way. I actually just winged that. <laughs> Everybody's looking at me like, oh, yeah, you planted that one. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, will this marriage be saved? I, I think George was going to ask the same question, but he didn't. Maybe, and <laughs> I'll show you really quickly. You see this Kalashnikov, which we'll be showing at a Tex Freshism show coming up. And it's a, you know, um, to James's point, uh, I was doing all these weapons, spoons. I mean, well, not necessarily weapons, but artifacts and from Coca-Cola to spoons and knives and peelers. And, uh, you know, George is here. He owns quite a few pieces of mine and he has a peeler that is a little weapon when you think about it, a peeler that you just peel a carrot with has a little blade in there. And that thing is like a sharp little booger, you know? And, and I am fascinated by paradox. And so most of my works have that in it. Um, yes, it can peel a carrot. And if you took it apart, you could slice your throat. And I did a razor blade and this led me into guns. Guns, guns have been used for years to protect, to do things. I have so many gun stories from people and, and, and some make me cry and, and, and others make me cry for different reasons because they, they're abused. But, we being the greatest machine and the keepers of the Garden of Eden, uh, that is, you know, we're kind of messing up here, but we do great things too. We have a responsibility to govern ourselves. I feel so strongly about that. I mean, I give to every town for gun safety every month. Um, and I even had a nephew killed by gunfire and that ended this series. Um, I just couldn't do another gun, but I uh, want to show you how complex they get. Like this is the inside of that Kalashnikov I mean, it looks like a little fantasy playland um, and it's you're right in the barrel of that gun and you can see how many brushes and things I'm using. There are little plants in there and leaves. And I mean, when I get into these things, I'm zooming in and out and it's um, it's a process. Um, so we're getting sort of the end of the hour um, and I have more nudes, but I, I don't I really love hearing your questions and having dialogue about this. Oh. So actually, I, I have a question. I'm Penny Dell. I'm, I'm from the Barrett Art Center too. I'm standing in front of Roz's piece. And um, I guess, you know, in a way it was prompted by Erin's question because Erin's work is all also here. And Erin uses very bright colors. And I'm gonna walk over to Erin's oh, piece. Could I stop sharing? Maybe I should stop sharing, do you think? No, no, no. Oh, no, you okay. Know, stay there. Okay. But um, she uses 
a lot of colors. And I'm thinking, you know, that very often people say to me, you know, use more colors and you have a very restrained black and white palette, which you use with lots of nuance. You know, have you considered, you know, diving back into color one of these centuries? Oh, well, uh, that's a great question. In my diamond scapes, there's one right behind me. See this purple, blue, uh, and also uh -huh. male. I'm very deeply into color on in what I would call my paintings, you know, my novels rather. Uh, deeply, deeply. It's only when I'm sketching that I haven't been to color too much, but I did start doing some squirt guns, which were leading in the color. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> I so. love that idea because the squirt gun is pacifist and it's fun. And in a culture like India, it's holy. You know, it's like the holy festival where everybody squirts each other with crazy pigments. And, it, you know, it, it's it, sad. Oh, we're, we're in a country. In. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just thinking of that that totally transforms the gun into kind of a joyful in instrument. You know, if oh. if you're if you're if you're basically throwing color around. Yes, I, I'm going to see. I don't want to spend too much time layering and taking. You know, finding all your things later, as you, all of you probably know, trying to find things after you make them. You, you have to be so careful about how you label things. But I. I thought I'd go try to see if I have one of my, my squirt guns. Um, there's one particularly that I, I really uh, like. Um, this one, uh, that was actually based on a squirt gun, uh -huh. but it got more involved and it's called Blue Squirt Uneasy Freedom. And it was done during the Paris riots. Yeah. And, and uh, there's a Statue of Liberty deep inside here. and. Uh, there's New York City and all sorts of things going on and it's red, white, and blue and it's Viva la France and it's American. So I did start going that way, but as I did say, a nephew of mine was killed by gunfire and I, I truly have not been able to gun down by like, I mean, so many bullets and it's not something yeah. I talk about or am allowed to too much, but I, I just couldn't do another gun. And that's where you sometimes just don't do things for a while and you, then you come back and you start doing something else. I mean, the Lincolns just erupted out of me. They they really did. And, and again, to your point, Penny, they were black and white and most of my drawings are, but I do love color and I'm kind of looking forward to getting back into luscious oils again. It, it sounds wonderful. Like, you know, it's been so um, terrific to have your work here alongside with some of the scrubby pieces I showed at the beginning and you know, uh, you. sculpture, some very exuberant colored pieces, you know, and they all enhance each other. You know, they all push their each other's meanings. And, you know, and it's all basically a celebration of drawing the figure, which whether it's on a cave wall or, you know, on, you know, Photoshop, you know, it's, it's really a terrific, expression of the bodies we all live in, you know, and I, you know, I really look forward to your coming up maybe and seeing it, you know, in C2, it would be really cool, but everybody, the, you know, the show looks terrific and really is getting a lot of praise. And I'm, you know, so honored that, that you agreed. And this is your second time in Body Beautiful. I was really happy that not only did you participate, but you also offered to, you know, do this sharing of your talents. You know, I wonder, Penny, if Roz could close with just a couple more of nudes she's done. Sure. Uh, thank you, Penny. I love being part of it. And who knows, maybe James and I can get up there for the, the closing. That really would be fun. Uh, you know, trying to be COVID safe and everything else. That's uh, I would really love to do that. Um, let me go back and get my demo for Body Beautiful. Yeah, I have a few nudes here. Most of these were done actually in a for a show in 2008. You know, I hadn't done a nude in a while and I thought, well, and I submitted these nudes, which are older pieces, the ones that Penny's talking about, but they're still new in terms of media and uh, doing this they're nude now. New really to us. <laughs> Thank you, but, um, but I, uh, it's kind of gotten me thinking more about, um, hmm, 
well, maybe I should get back into the nude. You know, I was so, it was so, when you get back into something, you're so fresh, you're not worried about it and you're, you're not perfect, perfecting anything or making a show or it's really nice sometimes when you put that paper down and you don't even know where you're going next and you start something, you go, oh, look at that. I mean, that's where some new germ of an idea always happens and can be very bold. These are just some of the pieces from that. Here I am drawing from the nude with my computer. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, and, and so I'm just setting up there and doing my thing. Um, here's some of the drawings I created. And see these little dots like on her leg right there. You just can't, they're little, they're these little leaves and they're stars and things that you can draw with that I just go boom. And then you can, with my pressure, if it's a big brush, it goes spreading out. I have to mention one thing. I did a piece of Lincoln and at one point in his forehead, I, I was, I've always been, I, the whole thing, I was looking at a, a wonderful portrait that's um, public domain by Alexander Gardner, fabulous portrait, the typical bow tie Lincoln. I did all 17 portraits from that one. Um, but the point being, I took my brush, digital brush, and I just went deep on his forehead in some intuitive moment. And this almost gives me chills and uh, to think about, but later someone who's bought that, the number one of that edition of which they're 20, he said, oh, wow, but isn't that, isn't that the temple where he was shot, where the bullet, and it is, and it, it isn't even in the drawing. I mean, it's not in the photograph. <laughs> and so I, I don't know, things in, in art just happen that you can't even explain. Um, here's another, some other nudes. Uh, this is Madeline number 16, one of my favorites. She's got little stars going up her leg and you know, you just, you know, we all know what it's like to feel transported when we're going after something. I, I felt that way going after the, the nude that I was drawing this week. Um, mm -hmm. Madeline number 11, she, she's, um, she, she was actually a, a big hit at an auction that raised money for, for, um, for women. Um, abused women, it was an auction, and, and I was glad that it was bid on many, many times. Uh, and I'm always arguing for artists to get something at auctions. I think they should get something. Not everything, but something. Um, anyway, uh, another drawing. Attitude, I'm usually just going for attitude and expression. I like the fast drawings when it comes to gesture. And just with a few lines, you know, it's so amazing what you can do with just a few lines. Um, so there you go. They're, they're beautiful. Really, <laughs> thank you for sharing these. You know, I, I, I remember the first one and the picture of you drawing on the tablet were part of last, last time's exhibit in 2019. And, you know, it, it's very, you know, a can-do kind of picture is like, oh, so that's how you do it. They're, you know, really, you're you're definitely showing us how. And I I look forward to you know to more in the future. And uh, Roz, one one final question for me is, can you print these out as um, I want to say billboards? You oh, know, sure. Because, yeah. You know, you know the. I mean, because I really like the fact that you have, you know, like size can also be an option. Stay right here. Stay right there. One second. Okay. All right. And but this is a good way to end. I'm, these are on the wall and you can't see them, but I'm bringing them over to you guys. This Yay. I printed out the model that I drew from. So let's remember, here's the model. I printed this out. I have a archival pigment very nice picture. yay now that is the real just photo you know that's just a picture of the model that i got online and then this is my drawing that i went out remember it was eight by ten but it didn't really yeah much at all going this big which is like 11 by 17 11 by 17 or it's 13 yay. by 19 now i could also i have pieces i've done uh that are 60, six, you know, 60 inches high, 30 inches wide. Sky's the limit, really. Wow. 
Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Roz. And thank you, Penny, for bringing Roz to us here at Barrett, um, at the Barrett Arts Center in Poughkeepsie. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, tomorrow we're going to have uh, Eve D'Ambra, who is a professor of art history at Vassar College right here in town, who's going to lead a cure, kind of curatorial walkthrough of all of these kind of traditions celebrating the body and the figure and looking at them in terms of classical traditions of beauty um, as a, you know, a classical art historian. So we'll be looking back, you know, a few thousand years and looking at how these different media and the body has kind of this, these traditions have come through and altered and changed. And I am, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how we can continue the conversation. And we hope that all of you are able to stop by up in Poughkeepsie to see Penny's wonderful show um, and the work of all of the amazing artists who she's brought together under one roof. Um, we'd really love to see you. And if you're not able to make it on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, um, give us a call, shoot us an email at info at barrettartcenter.org and we can set up a time for you to come see the show. So once again, thank you, Roz. Thank you so I much. One thing, I wanted oh, to say yeah. one thing. If anyone would like to be on my mailing list for things coming up, just write me at Roz at Roz Diamond, D-I-M-O-N.com. Um, or check, I'd love to see all of you on Instagram uh, at Rosolution is my my name. And and Joanna and and um, Penny and all of you, thanks for Thank you. making this possible. Thank you, Hooray. everyone. Yes, exactly. And, my sentiments, Penny. <laughs> and thank you, Joanna, for, you know, doing all the tech, you know, work that was needful for this, because, you know, we're all still learning. And Roz, again, an honor. Joanna, thanks. Bye, Bye now.